Today, we're going to talk about a rare but very serious complication you might see after giving naloxone. It's called naloxone-induced flash pulmonary edema. So here's how we'll break it down. First, we'll define the condition itself and the overdose state that sets the stage. Then, we'll get into the possible causes and what it looks like clinically. And finally, we'll cover how to manage it and what the patient's outlook is. All right, first up, what exactly is this condition? So, flash pulmonary edema, you'll see it abbreviated as FPE, the name really says it all. It's a sudden event. It's defined as a very rapid buildup of fluid in the lungs, and this happens almost right after you administer naloxone. The result is severe respiratory distress. To really get why FPE can happen, we have to look at what's going on with the patient's body during the overdose, before any intervention. So it all starts with the opioids. They suppress the respiratory center in the central nervous system. This also dampens the body's natural trigger to breathe when oxygen gets low. Because of this, the patient becomes severely hypoxic. That's a major lack of oxygen. This hypoxia actually starts to injure the tiny capillaries in the lungs, and they begin to leak. So you see, the initial damage is already there before naloxone even enters the picture. Okay, so what's the trigger? The current thinking is that it's the sudden reversal of the opioid's effects. There are three main theories about the mechanism here. The first theory, and it's the leading one, is something called reperfusion injury. Think about it. During the overdose, the lung tissue is already damaged because it's starved of oxygen. Then, when naloxone kicks in and breathing is restored, you get this sudden rush of oxygenated blood back into that damaged tissue. This can set off a huge inflammatory response, which makes those leaky capillaries just dump fluid into the alveoli. Theory number two is called neurogenic pulmonary edema. In this scenario, the super abrupt reversal from the loxone causes a massive sympathetic nervous system response. You get this huge surge of catecholamines, think adrenaline. This catecholamine surge spikes the pressure inside the lung's blood vessels so high that it literally forces fluid out into the lung tissue. And the third theory is a bit more mechanical. It's called negative pressure pulmonary edema, or NPPE. What happens here is, as the patient's drive to breathe comes roaring back, they might take this huge forceful gasp, but their airway is still partially obstructed. This action creates a really powerful negative pressure inside the chest, powerful enough to actually pull fluid right out of the capillaries and into the alveola. So that brings us to the clinical presentation. The most important thing to watch for is a patient who seems to be getting better right after you give naloxone, and then all of a sudden they take a nosedive. And the signs are pretty dramatic. You're looking for a sudden, severe shortness of breath. Their SpO2, their blood oxygen saturation, will plummet. A classic sign you might see is pink, frothy sputum. They'll also have tachypnea and tachycardia. That's rapid breathing and a rapid heart rate. You'll probably hear bibicillar crackles or rails on auscultation. And on top of all that, the patient will likely be very agitated and anxious. All right, so what do you do when you see this? The management all comes down to aggressive respiratory support. In the pre-hospital setting, the steps are very straightforward. Step one is simply recognizing what's happening, that sudden decline after naloxone. Immediately, you're going to want to give the highest concentration of oxygen you have. If the patient is conscious, sit them upright. That can help with the work of breathing. And of course, the goal is immediate transport to a hospital. Once they're in the hospital, the level of care escalates. These patients often need advanced respiratory support. We're talking high-flow nasal cannula or non-invasive ventilation like CPAP or BiPAP to help keep those alveoli open. For the most severe cases, intubation and mechanical ventilation might be needed, and all of this is done with continuous monitoring and supportive care. Okay, let's wrap up with the outcome. What's the prognosis for these patients? Well, the good news is, with prompt and aggressive supportive care, lung function typically recovers within about 24 to 72 hours. That rapid turnaround is really a hallmark of this condition. So the overall prognosis is generally excellent. This is a reversible condition. Without aggressive management we talked about, patients usually make a full recovery. And importantly, they typically don't have any long-term lung damage. It really shows how effective that immediate medical care is. So I'll leave you with a question to think about for your own practice. Knowing that this can happen, that a patient can look better and then suddenly crash, how does the risk of FPE change your protocols for patient observation after giving naloxone?